This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell and Stacy Jensen. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Give them a call, 727-9900. News is also brought to you by Desert View Hospital. You can count on us. Welcome to News 25 here on KPVM TV and Ace Country Radio. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. And I'm Stacy Jensen. It's Wednesday, August 24th. Well, today a ribbon cutting was held for the long-awaited, newly constructed Nye County Animal Shelter on Surrey Lane here in Pahrump. Oh, you know how um, thankful I am we got to open this. This has been coming for way too long. It's taken all of a year to get it built, as far as I'm concerned, because we found the money back when uh, John Koenig was on the board. We refinanced um, our jail saving the $4.1 million that built this. Got our interest rate down from down to 1.93, which we were super proud of. And so we basically got an animal shelter for free as far as I'm concerned. So we're yeah, proud yeah. of this day. Yeah. It's taken a lot of work to get us to this day. And uh, thank you. We did all of our research, went and saw all kinds of shelters all over the country. And we this is state of the art. Yeah. This gives you a place where you can be, there's three different sections of just to be able to visit the animal that you're adopting. So you have some privacy and you can see if this animal is going to work for you. The very first animal control officer here was June Fry. Okay. And, and she started business on the Pahrump Ranch in, in, the, uh, in the shop area. And then she moved over to the old store. And, and now we have a beautiful, beautiful building. Yeah. And, uh, it's just absolutely fantastic to see the infrastructure growing in Nye County to be able to support animals, people, and new life. As you go through, you'll see where uh, animal control can actually pull into the building and offload inside the building. Yeah. Uh, what we're trying to do is make sure that all the systems work. We're working out all the bugs. Every new building has bugs, you know that. Yeah. And uh, so far we're doing fantastic. Our, uh, our manager for the shelter is doing a fantastic job. Yeah. Um, how's it going with those um, dogs? Are they going to be coming here? We don't know yet. Yeah. Um, we, uh, we're still working on that. Yeah. We managed to get everybody categorized yesterday and everybody saw a vet. So that's really about all I can tell you at that point. And as this county grows, we're going to have to expand. Yeah. Uh, we're looking at uh, maybe 70 to 75,000 within the next five years. Yeah. Uh, we're pretty excited to open the shelter. Uh, we've been operating shelter base since July 1st over here and taking care of the animals, so it's been a good time. So um, we've definitely been met with a lot of challenges. Um, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for the experience that I've had coming from other shelters and animal welfare background. Um, we have been able to transfer all the animals over here safely, and uh, we're currently utilizing 24 Pet Watch. Um, so if you go to 24petwatch.com, put in our zip code 89060, you can actually look up all of our available animals, and it's a great place to look for animals if yours is missing. I'd say the community has had a really positive uh, response, so they're really helpful when it comes to reuniting animals with their owners, so I appreciate that so much. We are posting on Facebook. We try to post every found animal because we know a lot of people turn to social media, um, but unfortunately, you know, we're not able to post every animal individually. That's where the 24 Pet Watch site comes into play. So you're always welcome to call the shelter. We are more than happy to talk about the animals that we have here or maybe some that have been potentially found recently, um, but it's always recommended in the event that you have a lost animal to come down and actually look for them. We're really grateful to have so many PAW partners to turn to. Um, these 501c3 reputable rescue organizations help us a ton. Um, they can spend a lot more time and resources on animals that maybe have behavioral issues or maybe severe medical issues that we wouldn't be able to focus on in the shelter. Um, we have taken in a lot of animals, but when it comes to things like strays and owner surrenders, we really try to be a resource center. So we try to turn um, individuals to local rescue organizations that may be a better resource for them. 
Of course, with our animal control officers, they are always scanning for microchips. So our goal is to always return out in the field if we have to and alleviate the animals coming to the shelter at all. Um, but in the event that animals lost again, we really try to turn to social media. Um, if you find an animal, you have a true stray animal, you know, we will we will try to help you scan it for a microchip and help find the owner as well. Um, as far as available animals, I have about 26 available dogs, 10 available cats. And when I say available, I mean that they're already altered, vaccinated, microchip ready to go. Um, of course, since we do work with local law enforcement and animal control, we do have animals that are on site for protective custody or maybe are still awaiting their stray hold. So this weekend we are participating in the Clear the Shelter movement. It is a nationwide movement where the ultimate goal is to get all of the animals that are adoptable out of the shelter. Come this Friday, we are waiving adoption fees, meaning these animals will be free to ideal homes as long as they are over six months of age and already altered. We are located at 1580 East Siri, directly across the street from the uh, local treasure. Mm -hmm. And our phone number is 775-751-7020. If we don't answer, please leave us a message and we'll get back to you within 24 business hours. We have our Facebook. It's the Nye County Animal Shelter Facebook. The photo is currently a picture of the building. You are able to contact us through there and see some of our available animals as well as get that 24 pet watch link. Current shelter operation hours are Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and we do anticipate adding weekends to that soon. Ready? Yay! And the extreme winds and brownout conditions caused widespread visibility issues here in town for travelers. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue responded to a mutual aid assignment that happened at mile marker 34 in Clark County for a vehicle versus wall. During that time, they were also called to two local crashes, the first being at Gamebird and Homestead Roads this afternoon. This afternoon, there was a two-vehicle crash at Gamebird Road and Homestead Road, which resulted in two patients being transported locally by Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue Ground Ambulance to Desert View Hospital. Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies are investigating. And those brownout conditions. One person once was again transported to from a two vehicle to a crash here at Pahrump Valley Boulevard and Honeysuckle Street. One person was transported from a two vehicle crash that occurred this afternoon on Pahrump Valley Boulevard and Honeysuckle Street. That person was taken to Desert View Hospital with injuries. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue, Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies, and auxiliary units arrived on scene. Traffic was diverted around the crash site. This was occurring during the high winds and brownout conditions. The Nye County Sheriff's Office is investigating the cause of this crash. All right, we'll have a break and we'll be back in just a moment. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. This segment of the news is brought to you by Sunset Valley Pools. For quality service and supplies, call 775-513-4114. And welcome back. A two-month investigation by the Nye County Sheriff's Office ends with the arrest of a Pahrump woman who's accused of stealing money and a vehicle from an elderly man. Brad Francis has more. Rosemarie Mancini Rustin has been booked into the Nye County Detention Center on one count of possessing, receiving, or transferring a stolen vehicle, one count of obtaining or using another person's ID for a harmful or unlawful purpose, one count of obtaining or possessing a credit or debit card without the cardholder's consent, and one count of exploiting an older or vulnerable person. Mancini Rustin's arrest comes after the Sheriff's Office opened a criminal investigation in regard to stolen documents alleged to be in her possession. Mancini Rustin at one point had power of attorney to act for the victim, who's 87 years old. The victim told deputies he revoked that authorization at the end of July, but Mancini Rustin failed to return all of his belongings and personal property. He also told investigators that she had made attempts to change information on his credit cards and pension accounts. Last week, officers obtained a search warrant for Mancini Rustin's home to look for the stolen items. During that search, deputies found numerous documents belonging to the victim, including bank statements, copies of credit cards, family trust paperwork, checkbooks, and birth certificates. Officers also say they discovered a Toyota Camry at Mancini Rustin's address that had been reported stolen. During the investigation, the victim told officers Mancini Rustin had added herself as an authorized user on one of his credit cards after she was told that her power of attorney had been revoked. Authorities say Mancini Rustin had to use her old power of attorney to be added to the victim's account in order to exploit his finances. And deputies arrest a man in Tonopah for allegedly taking a person's dog. 
The Knight County Sheriff's Office says that they have arrested a person by the name of Richard Morris for robbery. According to the declaration of arrest on August 13th, detectives were dispatched to a location here in Pahrump to meet with a reporting party who said that his neighbor came into his driveway, pushed him down, and then stole his dog. Deputies went to the neighbor's residence and contacted Richard Morris. They say that Richard admitted that he took the neighbor's dog because he thought that the dog was being abused. Officers say they located the stolen dog at Morris's residence. The animal abuse allegation, they say, was unfounded. Morris was arrested for robbery. Police say that he used force to steal the personal property of another when he pushed the victim down and stole his dog. Well, RAM, or Remote Area Medical, is in desperate need of general support volunteers for their upcoming Pahrump Clinic. This clinic is set to be held October 1st and 2nd on the high school campus, and no medical experience is needed. This clinic provides free medical, dental, vision, and mental health services to the community. No questions asked. We're showing the flyer right there, so if you would like more information, you can always contact Ryan Muccio at 702-672-672. 6559 for more information. The sooner you register, the better, so they can make sure that they have a shirt for you. This is a great service for the community, and they could really use your help. And if you missed any of that, it's on our KPVM Facebook page. We're going to go to Rory right now at Pahrump Valley High School with the latest happenings in our student news. Hey Trojans, I'm Rory Rosso with your weekly student news report. So this upcoming week, there's a few things that in my opinion are pretty cool. First up, we have NWEA testing. Next week, NWEA testing will start and this will show your growth from what you have achieved now until Christmas. And now everyone make sure you dress your best on Monday, August 29th, because it is picture day for students at Pratt Valley High School. The pictures will be taken during your English class. Our yearbook and possibly extra pictures for you and your family that can be purchased will be taken. There is basic, standard, plus, and premium packets that can be bought, all ranging from $15 to $60. Everyone be ready for something new because also on the 29th, our cafeteria is now offering vegetarian options. These options are for people who choose not to eat meat. The options will include meatless chicken fingers, meatless chicken sandwiches, and meatless hamburgers. These will be in the first line closest to the microwave. Well, that is all for this week, Trojans. Have a great week, and I'm Roy Rossell. Back to the desk you go. Bye. We'll be back with more News 25 right after this. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. Also brought to you by Silver State Health. Visit silverstatehealth.org or call 702-471-0420 for an appointment. News 25, local news you can count on. And welcome back. Between watching TV and spending time on cell phones and using laptops for school, kids are spending a lot of time on screens these days and research, research shows that that can cause some issues for their eyes. From 1971 to now, we've seen a doubling of the rate of myopia or nearsightedness. Um, and we think that that is related to um, a combination of things, um, but mostly environmental factors of being inside and looking more at near um, things like reading and also screens, like small screens, um, and then also not spending as much time outside in the sunlight. Dr. Allison Babu is a pediatric ophthalmologist for Cleveland Clinic. She says kids who spend a lot of time on screens may also experience digital eye strain, which can cause headaches, a dry eye feeling, and blurry vision. Ideally, she says the best way to treat that is by cutting down on screen time. However, if that's not possible, she recommends using the 20-20-20 rule. For every 20 minutes of screen time, you give your eyes a 20-second break and try to look 20 feet away. 
Other things that you could do, depending on how severe your symptoms are, um, are, are trying to remember to blink, but it's actually kind of um, hard to remind yourself to blink. Um, but even just resting your eyes by closing them for even a few seconds can help. Some people do use um, artificial tears, eye drops to help relubricate their eyes. Usually you don't have to do that um, if you can take enough breaks and limit the screen time. And Dr. Ravouche says that the good news is that symptoms related to digital eye strain are all temporary and shouldn't cause any long-term side effects. If your child's vision problems persist, you should talk to an eye doctor. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Learner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Oh, look talk, at the dust talk, advisory. We've got dust and wind and... Talk about some wild weather. Yes. It was wild out there. You know, I hit it right on time, of course, so I'm covered in dust. But driving down the street, hard to see anywhere. Visibility, very poor. John's going to get us a full update. Look at all that dust blowing around there. I know there is a dust advisory still in effect and also uh, possible thunderstorms until... eight. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios on a Waffle House Wednesday. Yeah, we give it a try. Check out Fernley and Fallon. Weather twins at 99 and it never felt so fine. Carson City got all the way up to 96. 92 in Tonopah. That represents the cool spot in the state today. Uh, Goldfield close behind at 93. Beatty, 101. Pretty good. 104 out in Amargosa. That's a little bit sweaty and uh, for a few more days in a row, I guess. Uh, Las Vegas. Perfect. 99 degrees. Love that. Death Valley, 118. What are you going to do here in the paradise of Pahrump? It's uh, 98 degrees. That's our current temperature. It got up to 102 just a little bit earlier. Uh, south southeasterly winds. Big gusts, 20 miles per hour here and there. But mostly kind of calm today. Uh, humidity about 20%. Those clouds are uh, puffy and beautiful and building towards the evening. Uh, sun rose this morning at 6.09. Setting this evening at 7.22. Kind of earlier and earlier as we go along throughout the week. Uh, low tonight of 77 degrees. Southeasterly winds to 12 miles per hour and that humidity building up to 38%. Could be some rain overnight. Actually, they were saying like 15% chance, but look at this, 24% chance on Thursday and Friday diminishing down to 15%. We're still up uh, in the triple digits, <clears throat> but come Saturday, Sunday, look at that gorgeous weekend, upper 90s. Uh, sunshine, looks like we're just kind of spitting out the last little bit of this monsoon season the next couple days. Saturday, we'll see some winds blowing out all those clouds and uh, five days of sunshine, uh, winds under 10 miles per hour. Temperatures creeping back into the triple digits Tuesday and Wednesday. It's uh, going to be another couple months of heat, I think, after this uh, next little bit. So hang in there. It's going to be a gorgeous weekend. Back to the desk. Here's Deanna. Thanks. Well, we know that. Oh, thank you so much, John. <laughs> Pool season. Um, that's going to end this Saturday, August 27th. And that's for our community pool here in Pahrump. And, uh, uh, you know, adult swim noon to three. Open swim, three to six, lots of fun. So get in there while you can before everything wraps up I know, in the season. so much fun. And uh, thanks to everybody who donated and made a lot of free swims for everybody. Well, Rotary. Rotary, Rotary definitely Thank did you, that. Pahrump Rotary. Yes, yeah, yeah. And uh, thanks to all the lifeguards and everybody who worked at the pool this pool season. Yeah. It was so important to have the kids out there having a good time. Get in your pool hours. Go have fun at the community pool at Petra Park at the corner of Basin and Highway 160. And we'll see you back here tomorrow night. I'm Deanna. I'm Stacy. Good night. Good night.